convinced. Are you convinced of the answer you heard? That actually minimum government is not just a matter of size, it's to do with reducing the role of government and its influence in your lives. So can I turn uh, in the answer, can I ask you a uh, question uh, also to Mr. Mittal? Uh, if you say to universities what anniversaries you are to celebrate and the central government, the HRD ministry say, is that minimum government? If you say who to invite, if you are actually appointing to uh, the National Institute of Fashion Technology, the chairperson, etc., is that minimum government? So I would say that whereas Mr. Mittal might be correct in saying that there is a concept which we are missing, for me it is actually reorientation, fundamental reorientation of the role of government, which I think uh, with great... Uh, with great humility I must say that I don't think that's been understood at least I don't see this in this uh, in this uh, reshuffle Baba, or, Baba, let me bring you in and get an opposition viewpoint before I go back to Ms. Mittal on that that catchy slogan of the Prime Minister's maximum governance minimum government had won a lot of applause and praise and people thought that his first government which was just 64 ministers actually lived up to the belief that we were getting minimum government. Now you've just heard Mr. Mittal reinterpret what minimum government means. He says it's not a matter of size, it's a matter of reducing the role and function and importance of government in the lives of individuals. And I have to put it to you that that's a very credible reinterpretation. But the question is, A, does it work for you? And more importantly, do you believe the role of government has been reduced over the last two years? Or is Mr. Mittal raising a promise only to make it look as if it's unfulfilled? Uh, a short answer to you, Karan. I think this reshuffle is an indication of maximum politics, minimum governance. <laughs> the entire reshuffle is governed by the imperative, especially in the short term, of political dividends that may come in the uh, assembly elections that are due in the next few months and a year. As far as governance goes, as you know, this government, I would give it 100 out of 100 in coining catchy slogans. But in terms of implementation, I would give it very poor marks. In fact, whether it's on the index of ease of doing business or consciously reducing the role of government in everyday lives, we've seen very little of it in terms of institutional reform. Whereas the entire canvas of politics has been opened up and we have a jumbo cabinet today where there is a talent deficit and Modi the politician has finessed Modi okay. the administrator. Let me go back to you Mr. Mittal before I go to Mr. Singhvi. I am prepared to accept your redefinition of that catchy slogan that minimum government is not a question of size and numbers but a question of reducing the role and importance of government in the lives of individuals. It's a very Thatcherite interpretation, but it's acceptable to me. The problem is, where in the last two years have you actually reduced the role of government? Give me two or three examples. First, let's go to the environment ministry. This was the biggest b bottleneck in development of industry or any development in this country. Everything has been decentralized. The reliance of uh, having clearances from the central government, the Ministry of Environment and Forest, which was known for its uh, ex-minister's tax, is no more. It's passé, it's history. And rightly so, Prakash Javadekar has been rewarded. Okay, number two, what's the second? He has created Give me a second instance. an automated system where you don't have to sit in the darbars yard. Number two, num num number two, number two. There have been major economic reforms in Commerce Ministry. Whatever little license rajas existed, they have again been decentralized at the lowest levels of the officers to take decisions themselves and not to have ministerial control over all these clearances. Second, you know, I, I mean, I can list out one, just, so many. No, no, just give me one more. I mean, just give me one more. Uh, permissions which were required and where five. Give me a third one and then I'll go yeah. to someone else. The, this is the third. Then fourth, Ministry of Industry. I, third, MSME. Fourth, Ministry of Industries. So the entire plethora of these, uh, you know, permissions from the minister have been reduced. Okay. 
and you know we are debating the cabinet expansion today i am willing to take this uh, on any day okay. with anybody whether we have reduced the role of government or not it's a good point you are making let me go to abhishek singh ji mr singh ji you heard three examples of illustrations of how in fact that phrase minimum government should be interpreted and therefore the argument is the fact that mr modi has ended up with a government of the same size as mr manmohan singh had in 2009 doesn't mean that this prime minister has gone back on that catchy phrase of minimum government and the three examples are a the role of government in environmental clearance is reduced and reduced sharply for which javdekar has been promoted secondly the role of economic reforms has removed the role of discretion in com commerce and commerce ministry transactions and similarly in the case of industry where presumably although mr mithil didn't say it fdi now happens more by the automatic route than the discretion route and that means once again the role of government is reduced very quickly do you accept that despite my claim that in terms of numbers the government has gone up mr mitchell's given a good case for arguing that in terms of clearances and procedures government has minimized uh karan i think we are mixing up two completely unrelated issues and i also think that you have to await a much more comprehensive study to re, to to understand whether the ease of doing business or the sequence of permissions or the labyrinth ladders of government to become less there is no such evidence we have moved up marginally in the ease of doing business in one index in several others we've gone down to give an individual example of a ministry of environment clearing a lot of permissions i can give you a counter example that half the country's ngos and half the country's uh, environmentalists are up in arms saying that the environment ministry has confused itself to have become the corporate affairs or clearance of corporate affairs project ministry there is a job a focus and object of the environment ministry and there is a lot of problem there where people okay. believe that indiscriminately permissions are being given so okay. merely you know if i clear karan thapa's project quickly it doesn't make me ease of doing business secondly i entirely agree that the number of ministers may have no direct nexus to the ease of doing business or to the less interference of government in governance so it's got been the numbers but the point i'm saying is mixed up is because this reshuffle has nothing to do with ease of doing business okay this is purely for up elections declining graphs in rajasthan and madhya pradesh and possible decline in gujarat let me then stop you there it's obvious i mean let, the, 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 the two don't connect let's at stop all. let me stop you yes. there i want to move beyond that question of whether mr modi has lived up to or contradicted his catchy phrase of minimum government maximum governance i want to come to all the other aspects of this reshuffle that happened today sidha bhatia the last time mr modi brought in new ministers the intake included people like manohar parikar and suresh prabhu and they were universally regarded as people who would add to the efficiency and performance of the government this time round we have 19 new faces but i can't think of a single one with perhaps the possible exception of mj akbar and another gentleman who's a surgeon but that even is questionable whether they actually fit the category of people who will add to efficiency and performance has politics rather than quality of character and quality of credibility determined who gets taken in so uh, i think uh, you've been saying reshuffle i think we should stick to the word expansion what has happened so far is we don't know what's going to happen uh, tomorrow but what has happened so far is 19 faces none of them with any kind of stellar uh, reputation or record in management of a ministry uh, you had uh, the last time as you mentioned mr parikar mr parikar had been a chief minister mr prabhu had an excellent reputation from mr vajpayee's cabinet so here are two heavyweights who were brought in soon after the government was formed so none of these 19 give any kind of confidence yet let's not be um, unfair but so far they give no uh, confidence second uh, many of them belong to the dalit and obc caste now clearly if that's not politics what is so this government one gets the impression that this government not the party but this government is in perpetual election mode so it has got something that it has done to keep an eye on uh, up first and the other three states okay mr athavle for example who has uh, some kind of ministerial experience is definitely there to attract the dalit vote 
there is no question because the Republican Party has some kind of uh, you know base. Okay. Let me let me. Thirdly, I think it's very very important that I noticed that Mr. Mittal kept on saying, "May I just yes, finish this?" Yes. Mr. Mittal kept on saying ease of doing business. How is governance related only to ease of yeah, doing but business? But let's not go back to that point. We've the discussed this, Siddharth. Let's move on. The, We've discussed uh, that point. Let's not go back to that point. I want to move on. Otherwise, we'll get stuck there. There is another way, I suppose, of looking at this cabinet expansion. Although, by the way, I am going to use the word reshuffle, not expansion, because five ministers have been dropped. And it's possible that portfolios could be changed when we find out about portfolios. Another way of looking at this reshuffle is not just in terms of the intake, in terms of caste, or the failure to bring in people qualified by talent and experience. You can look at it also in terms of increased representation for a couple of states. UP, Gujarat, Rajasthan in particular, but also Karnataka and Uttarakhand at a lower level. And four of those states are states where there will be election either next year or in one case the year after. Doesn't that lead to the conclusion that once again the determining factor is electoral concerns? Well, it leads to the conclusion that BJP has not learned. They had seven ministers from Bihar. And what was the result in Bihar? 53. They had come uh, uh, plummeting down from a huge total in the uh, foregoing, in, in the previous government, 92 or something, it came to half. So I would say that that lesson has not been learned. What I would notice, just going back to this thing that 19 people are not extremely well known, I think, uh, Karan, the interesting thing is that regional satraps have not been inducted. I do not see any of these with a hugely uh, important regional base. So what's happening is that the Prime Minister, who is already uh, dwarfing the central ministers over here will further dwarf the in the cabinet. I mean, the, the 19 included. What you're the saying is a age, giant has deliberately chosen pygmies. No, I would not say that. I would say this has happened. That the average height now of the minister is lower now with the 19. Just one last thing is, it's going towards the presidential form of government. Do remember, and although one should not be called, uh, citing Pandit Nehru, Pandit Nehru had uh, Sardar Patel as, uh, you know, as the home minister, somebody who could combat with him. I think Atalji also had Adwani uh, who was uh, supposedly... Rajna doesn't fit that list? So I uh, know I would say so who actually uh, okay. we can look him eye in, you know, eye Let me eye. bring you in at that point again Mr. Mittal. What you're hearing is that in fact two types of politics determine the expansion of this g group of ministers. Firstly, state-based concerns reflective of the fact that elections are coming up and then secondly caste concerns. You have after all seven SCST new ministers, two from the minorities, two from women and one at least an OBC. So it's either caste concerns or straightforward state-based election concerns. Talent is not the reason why people have been incorporated. Experience is not the reason why they've been incorporated. Can I beg to differ with what observations have been made about this till now? And you'll give me sufficient time to explain why I say this. First, the consideration of the elections which are coming. Out of the 19, there are only four, three from Uttar Pradesh, one from uh, Uttaranchal, who have elections in next one year. Only four out of 19. Gujarat so also has charges. elections in December 2017. Secondly, and three intakes from Gujarat. Of experience. Sir, that is one and a half years. Sir, one and a half years. It's still next year. Sir, sir, it's still sir, next one year. And a half years. It's still and next that also year. only makes it seven. Even if you consider. Sir, even if you consider. Sir, if you, even if you consider. Even if you consider that it is only seven out of 19. So if it is seven out of 19, can that be the reason? No. Secondly. You are all say, saying there is no experience and there is no talent. Now let me read out some of the names which are not only experienced but enormously talented and also regionally important. Are you going to say that SS Aluwalia, who has been in parliament for more than 25 years, headed uh, JPCs and headed innumerable committees, is not talented? Ramesh Chandrapa from uh, Karnataka, who was the home minister, who has been a four-time MP, two-time MLA. He is not experienced or not talented. Vijay Goyal has been a part of the Prime Minister's office. A regional satrap, Delhi he holds today. Three times Lok Sabha, one time Rajya Sabha. 
minister for five years and yet he does not have experience, he is not uh, yes. heavyweight enough. Rajan Gohain, a towering personality of Assam, a homia, a four time Lok Sabha member, he is not. Mr. Arjun Ram, I, 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 uh, I think you made your point, Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell, we don't have states. to go through the biography of every new person. You've made your point. Let me get in Papan Varma and see whether he's convinced. Sir. I don't think he needs an introduction. Well, let's see whether Papan Varma is convinced. You heard Mr. Mitchell actually read out the biographies of several new people who've been brought in and argue that they have talent, they have experience. S.S. Aluwalia, the gentleman from Karnataka who was Home Minister. These are people who he says visibly have talent, they have experience. Yes, have it's been, wrong to say they've been, been brought in just for political reasons. Are you convinced? No, I'm not convinced and I'll tell you why. There's a basic reason for it and that applies also to your earlier question about minimum uh, government. You see, Karan, rarely have governments seen such a disproportionate concentration of power in the Prime Minister's office. There are today, from what I hear, and I could be wrong, but thousands of files pending in the Prime Minister's office because almost no decision can be taken on a delegated basis or without micromanagement and clearance by the Prime Minister's office. It is in fact a one-man government. That in itself as a philosophy devalues the role of talent. The second, the second point is, if you want to look at talent and expertise, look at what the government was before this cabinet reshuffle. You have senior cabinet ministers who have been marginalized so verifiably. And I don't want to embarrass them by taking their name, but look at the Ministry of External Affairs. The minister is not in the loop on almost any major decision making from what we hear. And she is one of the most competent ministers with the most uh, 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 diversified experience you can imagine. The Home Minister himself. Thirdly, where there was talent, it has not been promoted. We had Piyush Goyal, we had Dharmen Pradhan, we, we had Jayan Sinha. We, people like these have not been promoted, but non-performers have been kept where they are. I don't see what Radha Mohan Singh is doing in the cabinet. I think, frankly, I don't know what role Smriti Irani Karanji, has this is unfair. her legacy and the Karanji, activities this is she has created. This is absolutely unfair. Uh, 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 Mr. Mittal, I'll come to you, those, I'll come to you, but those. let him express his opinion. Have you finished? Pavan, go ahead. And all those who have embarrassed the government and have also been non-performers, like for instance V.K. Singh, Mahesh Sharma, Sanjeev Balayan, Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti, what is their contribution? All right. So let us not take it on a mechanical reading of expertise and, and, and administrative or otherwise. You know, what is the role of ministers in this government when the Prime Minister deals directly with bureaucrats? Okay, you've made Overarching your point. Overarching ministers. Let it's me, a let concentration me. of power which is unprecedented. You know, the point that's being made... Karanji, I must respond to it. I, I'll get you to respond, Mr. Mittal, but let Karanji, me bring... I Mr. Mr. Mittal, Mr. Mr. Mittal, Mr. I'll get you to respond, but let me bring no, others no. in. This mustn't become... No, no, you can't, you can't do this. You can't have a 5 is to 1 and then say I don't have the 5 is to 1, Mr. Mr. Mittal, Mr. Mr. Mittal, Siddharth Bhatia and Nalani Singh are, a, are all independent journalists. I'll come back to you. Anyway, I'm giving you more chance than the others. I'll come back to you. No, but sir, they may be independent, but I am being attacked. I am being attacked and I have a right because what I just heard is not only obnoxious, it is nauseating. All right. Let Mr. Pavan Verma so, become the Prime Minister of this country and then pass these value judgments. Can I, I can't let them go. Let him reply after me. Let him reply together. You can't have this kind of a debate on this level. Let him reply together. Let him reply Make your point. Go ahead. Emphatic use of... of go ahead, no, no, Pavan Verma. Let Mr. Mittal speak. Go ahead, Mr. Mittal. Make Mr. your point. Mr. Pavan Verma's observation... Mr. Mr. Pavan Verma's observations sadden me that as somebody who should know what are the limits of observation in terms of uh, what, what is the competence of ministers, I think he's crossed all limits. Mr. Pawan Verma, the day you become the Prime Minister of this country, kindly make these observations, otherwise you have no right and no business. Sushma Swaraj, whether she's been marginalized or not, you are not the spokesman yeah, and you do not know the facts. So please do not speak lies and do not speak but I know the facts. on television. As far as who should be promoted or who should not be promoted, I think it's the prerogative of the Prime Minister and not Mr. Pavan Verma. But forgive me, Mr. Mr. Mittal, it is mandate. also the but prerogative of the President to question how Last the Prime Minister exercises his prerogative. 
The Prime Minister has the right to choose his ministers, but the press sir, has the right sir, to sir, comment, sir, to criticize, to analyze. Right. He is not the judge of the competence of a minister for being promoted I, 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 or not promoted. Karan, and if you think I have the right to comment, comment Karan, 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 make him the Prime Minister. All right, gentlemen, Karan, I need to bring Karan. in my other guests. Let me come to you, Mrs. Singhvi. You have Mr. no Singhvi. right to say who should be promoted. That's it. Mr. 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 Now, in fairness, you must allow other guests to speak. I do, I do. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask Mr. Singhvi to speak. Come in, Mr. Singhvi. I want to put to you a different issue because I think this question about uh, talent, lack of talent, minimizing or giving room to ministers has been adequately aired. I want to bring another commitment the Prime Minister, it was believed, had made when he first appointed ministers that no one who crossed the threshold of 75 would continue in government. Now, clearly, there are two ministers today in the government at cabinet rank who are over 75. Kalraj Mishra and Najma Heptullah, but they continue. This would have been an ideal opportunity to move them to Raj Bhavans or somewhere else and to keep the Prime Minister's alleged word that 75 was the cut-off age. What do you make, Mr. Singhvi, of the fact that he's gone back on that alleged commitment? I hope you'll give me a couple of minutes, Karan. I think I've got the least time. And merely because people are generally critical of the BJP doesn't mean that the BJP representative gets extra time. Uh, first of all, I think the policy as far as your question is concerned is show me the face and I'll show you the rule. When the object is to marginalize the Advanis, the Murli Manohar Joshis and the Yashwan Sinhas, a age rule is shown. When the object is to benefit somebody, in the case of one particular person because she's crossed over from the Congress has been a bit of a vocal critic, then the age rule doesn't apply. So clearly there is no consistency, no reason has been given. Uh, reports are set out, leaked, saying they'll be dropped, but nothing is happening. So I think there is complete inconsistency. The rule is not sacrosanct. But I want to make the more important point, which has already been made, because I didn't think I'd get enough time, that this was a time to demonstrate droppings. The droppings are as important. Each of the five names taken, which I wanted very much to take, the Sanjeev Balyans, the VK Singhs, the Sadhvi uh, Jyoti,